Hey, yo, what's up, man? It's Kolsky Funday back at it once again. Um, I did a video about the Chaldeans in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? About how they got money to invest through Saddam Hussein, to invest in churches and other things like that, and in their businesses in their community. And now this one come from the National Black Chamber of Commerce. You understand me? I'll repeat this again. The NBCC, the National Black Chambers of Commerce. I'm on their website. And it says, Remembering the Chaldean Model Part 1. So, this is supposed to be the black business, you know what I'm saying? The black business thing, conglomerate or whatever. People can sit together, got their money together, doing their thing. And they say, I remember the Chaldean Model Part 1. Let's see what they're talking about. Oh, it seemed like yesterday. I was ending my military duty, drafted number 4, and returning back to corporate America. My employer, Procter & Gamble, Promise, kept this promise in accepting all military draftees back into their workforce. They assigned me to Detroit, Michigan as a sale representative in the package soup and detergent division. Tide, ivory chair, etc. It was cool to go back to Detroit as it was a big black city with a strong black mayor, the Honorable Coleman Young. Little did I know that Motown was going through a blistering white flight and that it would leave the remaining people in the middle of economic collapse. It was 1974, and black power and a sexual revolution was the crash headed to each other. In my role, grocery stores was a lifeblood in the growth of our growth and development. When the marketing support of a major grocery entities, coupled that with TV and radio advertising, plus couponing sales, were bound to increase, provided you manage self and display space within the grocery stores. Detroit was having a major ground-level drug war, which encouraged much robbery of the grocery stores. Three of the four major food chains announced they had enough. Kroger, Gray Scott, and AP announced they were leaving the inner city and they began their departure. Only Farmer Jack was staying. This brought major changes to Detroit demographic and to my industry. All black churches and social organizations extremely protest, but what could they do? Here was a black Detroit without grocery stores, and no blacks were about to fill the void. There were only two black-owned grocery stores in the city, and the future was bleak. The only option was to travel to the suburbs and do your grocery shopping. So everyone thought. What makes a culture or a people great are four main ingredients. One, faith, devout and strong faith. Two, education. Three, entrepreneurship. And four, communication. The black populace of Detroit did not have this at all. Let me repeat this. To make a great culture of great people, he said faith, education, entrepreneurship, and communication. He said the populace of Detroit did not have this at all. And this is the national black congressional, you know, Commerce, convince with people, you know, business. Let's continue on. At the same time, there's a big migration happening. Arabs from the Middle East are moving into the 90 Detroit area, like I-94 going west. One segment of this migration was the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans are Arab by blood, by are Christian as opposed to Muslim. In fact, the religion started in 331 A.D. by Jesus Christ Himself. Most of these new Chaldeans were from Iraq and Syria. All things related to their culture were based at the Chaldean church. When they noticed that all the major grocery stores that pulled out of the inner city, Detroit, and blacks wouldn't do anything about it, they exclaimed, let's get into the grocery business. People will still have to eat. So it began. Empty grocery store buildings started becoming Chaldean grocery stores. Unlike the white owners before them, the nouveau Chaldean owners dealt with any type of adversity head on. One of the main reasons the major chains were left were robbery and the murdering of their managers. You went to a Chaldean store, you were clearly notice that the, motors, the managers and the store clerks were carrying pistols on their hips. What was even more startling was the erected crow nests over the meat section or checkouts. The crow nest would be one individual and one clearly seen rifle, about a 30 yard 6 deer rifle. You would come and rob, but you leave dead, was the message. Each store was a clan operation. The men were store clerks, butchers, and managers. 
the ladies were cashier. Any outside help would exclusively come from the neighboring black community, and that was a good thing. Before long, they were formidable. I had to understand them and for the critical of my sales number. I inquired some of the owners, and they referred me to their church, the Chaldean Church of Michigan. The one in the last video I talked about was Saddam helped out. The minister of the church referred me to their business directory, who published Chaldean business directory. Did it say, did it say multicultural business directory? No, Chaldean business directory. This is most fascinating. Annually, he prints Chaldean business directory, which lists every Chaldean old business within the United States. Remember, we had pause when we had that too. It was called the Green Book. All right, we had that too. The Chaldean members were religiously, not a pun, used the directly to do their daily business. So they basically self segregated their own dollar to bounce it on their soul. They did this by their soul. They innately did this by their soul. By the time I had left Procter and Gamble and started working on fast track develop on the fast development track with Johnson Johnson Disposable Diapers Division. I had bought a full-page ad in the Chaldean business directory, and I still started the store. Their store owners were so grateful that I had a vision insight to befriend them. After all, they were providing a service to the black community of Detroit, which, for whatever reason, could not do it itself. Their promotion of my product soon got me promotion, and I was off to Chicago. Now, this is written by a guy named Mr. Alfred, who's the co-founder, president, and CEO of the National Blank Chamber of Commerce. There's his website right there. Remember, he's talking about individual. Now, you know, he's trying to flip it back to his individualism because he got paid after messing with the Chaldeans. He could have helped provide the business out there, but he already worked for a white man business. You know what I'm saying? His deal was trying to get in, trying to cut. So if he can cut through the middleman and get to the black Chaldeans, you know, before I put it on the shelf, then so be it. But he going to cut up himself. You know, as he said, this is uh, this remember this is the black business concomers, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Faith, devout strong faith, education, entrepreneurship, and communication. The black populace of Detroit did not have this at all. But here he is running a black conglomerate, a black business of commerce, you know, in black the National Black Chamber of Commerce. And he couldn't fill in and suck in that void. That's where he supposed to step in and fill in that void at. As a collective. That's when the education supposed to come on through at. As a collective. The Black Chamber of Commerce supposed to come in and do that. You know what I'm saying? They supposed to drop the education. They supposed to drop the entrepreneurship. They supposed to have the communication. And develop faith in the people. Of their own people. But they're not doing that. You understand me? And that's why we getting caught up. So he living good. He doing his individualism. Working for another... Went from Procter and Gamble and started working for Johnson and Johnson and disposed of the Vipers division. You know what I'm saying? So he went there and started working with the white folks, started working with shit. And that's how I go, family. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not knocking at them for doing what they're doing. They're getting their money, they're getting paid. You know what I'm saying? But it's a damn shame that the Black Chamber of Commerce, who's supposed to feel that suck in trade and their businesses and things of that nature during this time, did not do anything to help his own people out and let them sink. And that's a bootleg, cotton-picking leadership we got. Anywho, so, hey, subscribe to the channel. Much love to you and yours. Um, donate to the moon. We cash have a Koski. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be dropping black African history like this for you and yours every day, all day. Peace.